Are you shy? She's not. Hey, welcome. I'm Darren Curtis, and here we have Bradley Pitt. We're Sacred Resonance. We're here to talk today about Plant Songs, our latest fringe show at the Joinery in Adelaide City. Welcome, everybody. So how many shows have you got? So coming up um, at the Joinery, we're doing an art installation exhibition. Um, we have visual art with um, In Search of the Divine, Jessica Curtis. Um, myself and Bradley Pitt, we're doing um, sound of the music of the plants, where we hook up plants to electrodes and let them sing and also other sound installation stuff of how seeds and um, beans can grow through certain sonic frequencies. But besides that, we're also doing sound baths as well. And also but inspired by a book written in the 1970s called The Secret Life of Plants. Um, we are looking at, again, exploring the idea that plants can communicate and have the ability to sense our emotions, sense consciousness. Maybe there's a, a way that plants can communicate and we're looking at using music as a form of way to look at that mm. possibility. Excellent. So we're not on radio. We're live here, but not on radio. So we'll do all that again on radio. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Thank you. So we'll jump on now. And if you've got the dates and times of the shows, mm. got all them. So I'll ask you about that as well. Thank you so much for tuning in this afternoon. We've got Bradley and Darren joining us, and we do have Jessica who will be joining us shortly. So welcome all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for coming in. Now, tell us about this uh, fascinating Adelaide Fringe show at the Celestial Gardens. Yes, well, we're offering something quite unique. We're going to demonstrate how plants can communicate or possibly communicate, and we're looking at the possibility through using um, Electrodes on plants, you can detect the water resistance in the plants as a way that we can then convert that data into sound. And that allows us to hear the plants, and so we're exploring how that could be a way to communicate. Mm. So this is at, held at the joinery in the city. Um, it's a unique space there. Um, Conservation SA and other unique ecological in departments are working there. But it's a community space, community garden. And we're transforming into a celestial garden. So opening night, March the 12th, from 7.30, we're having um, mini performances, music of the plants, visual art with Jessica Curtis, and organic food and wine there for the evening. And then we open then from um, Thursday, uh, Saturday, sorry, March the 13th and 14th, and then Thursday the 18th, 19th, 20th, and 21st of March. And that's free to the public. We offer free events every year for Adelaide Fringe. But also, um, also running um, sound baths. And this sound bath is unique because the plants are playing the music for the sound bath. And we're just sculpting the plant songs into this unique experience where you lie down on yoga mats and bathe in the frequencies of the plants. Mm. Fantastic. Just tell us a bit more about how, how it works, um, sort of uh, translating the music from the plant to, to how we hear it, all of that sort of thing. Mm. Yeah, well, it's, this sort of started back in the 1960s where a, a guy who worked with the lie detector and he was training people to use the lie detector in New York. And he was just sitting in his room one day and he was just out of, in, for some reason, decided to um, test the plant by putting the little electrodes on the plant. And then he dipped one of the leaves into coffee and see if it responded or anything like this. Anyway, nothing happened much, but when he actually started to think about burning the leaf or doing something not nice to the plant, without even doing something, the, suddenly the needle of the detective moved and then he determined that there's something that the plant's picking up. The, so he the went, negative thoughts, the negative, negative thoughts, vibes. Yeah. Because Ooh, it's based upon this um, detector, light detector, it's based on a Wheatstone bridge circuit. And what it does, it measures, it measures electrical resistance, normally with the skin resistance. So they set a baseline, and then if you're lying, the deviation from that baseline, you can detect, detect electrical resistance. Well, the surface of the leaf has electrical patterns moving through it. So you can set a baseline to it and then, and then detect the electrical resistance 
take that data from that and then convert it into sound. Mm. Specifically, mm. what we're doing MIDI notes here, and then into then nice. um, so you can add guitar sounds mm. or synthesizer mm -hmm. sounds to it. But essentially, looking at the patterns that's coming from that data from that sound. And I, and I think it's really interesting because it's looking at really like what he was showing back in the 1960s and 70s, and this sort of brought a whole crave and a movement. Hence the book, The Secret Life of Plants, that came out. Um, that plants can communicate, and maybe if we talk positively to the plants, and, and that they may have some sort of connection. So, all of this sort of, it was Why interesting not? to read. I believe in all that. My mother in law's <laughs> always talked to her plants, and I think so has my mum, or has she, has she sung to them or something? But I know my mother, mother in law has sort of talked to them and cared for them and loved them, and her plants are amazing. Yeah. <laughs> it's fascinating now, moving from the 1970s and now 2000s, that a lot of the younger researchers now, we're looking back at their research. And there's new data coming out now, a new research showing that plants do communicate through sound, audible sound actually. Um, from the University of Western Australia, Monica, she's been looking at how certain um, roots produce a clicking sound at 220 hertz. Mm -hmm. Audible to us on a very micro scale, but they communicate to each the other. The roots communicate to each other. And they're finding that flowers, for example, are producing ultrasound frequencies. We normally in the human hearing range hear from 20 to 20,000 hertz in average, or 16,000 hertz. But the ultrasonic frequencies, which are like what bats and dolphins sort of work with in those high ranges, they actually send out ultrasonic frequency they've found now and the bees pick up that sound mm. to pollinate yeah. the flowers. So Makes sense. There's a whole soundscape, so maybe oh, there singing is. and talking to them does something to of them. Of course. Yeah. Yeah. I, I fully um, agree with that. It makes sense. Mm. I mean, it can sound a bit sort of way out for some, but not really, <laughs> because yeah. when you explain it, it's logical. And even how they say going to nature and... People, musicians saying they go into nature to get inspiration, mm. or anyone just saying mm. to de-stress, we go into nature. We we garden, we put our hands in the earth, we go for a walk in the mountains, or whatever. It, it's there's something there. There's an energy that's calming. Well, this Ooh, whole this whole yeah. movement is now forest bathing, where you go out. This oh. started in Japan. You go out into the forest, and they believe just by the wind and the sound of the trees and grounding, you come in touch with something that. Not in the city. And we have to remember how important plants is to our human culture. I mean, like, we use plants for everything from, of course, food, but also in a way of what we're wearing, clothes and mm. material from everything, even to musical instruments are made out of plants. Trees, so, yeah. you know, you have the flutes, you have all these different instruments, even the guitar, the wood, all of this is connected in some level. So, uh, many ancient cultures really felt there was something significant in the plant kingdom even within the animal kingdom, and they communicated through use of music and drumming and different rituals to communicate to those kingdoms. And so maybe we're rediscovering some sort of ancient knowledge of how to come in harmony with nature again. Yeah, that's what fascinates us, because we're, we're, we're called sacred resonance. We like exploring sound and resonance in everything. So from the DNA um, sonification of data to looking at how plants can communicate in unique ways, you know, how can we enliven that soundscape? How can we bring that invisible, well, visible sonically to people in a contemporary space? Mm. Mm. And it was so interesting when you said, just to backtrack a little bit before, when you said that just the thought, the person thinking that they're going to do something bad to the plant, the plant reacted. Mm. Because I don't know if you've heard of the study or you might know the name of the study, I don't know, but it was a, a situation where they were doing these tests and they had it. What, what do you put on the plant? Little pads? Yeah, like little medical electrodes you would normally yeah. use that's to attach right. your body. Yeah. Electrodes, so that's yeah. what they put on the plant. And they had different people, they did an experiment, a study, different people walking past the plant, doing nothing, just walking past. And then they had one guy who was going to break a part of the plant off, break a branch off, mm. and then keep walking. And then um, everyone continued walking. And then when he walked back, the plant reacted. Mm. Because just from the, what is it, the smell, the energy, the vibrations, yeah. Yeah. everything, Feel, you know, the plant reacted. Like, get it. that person away from me. We, we, <laughs> yeah. We've worked with this for, since 2015 now, in different installations, different ideas. The original one was in the bike conservatorium in the glass house in the Botanic Gardens. We had five plants hooked up in, in that centre, and we had nine days where we just listened to the plants make the soundscape in there. And that was during one mad time, so we had thousands of people walk through there. And it's interesting seeing people walk past the plants and saying, oh, do they make sound and what do they do? And there were some people that, when they walked past the plant, would stop or start playing individually. And there was, and they, there seemed to be some connection there. Yeah, we noticed it. And we noticed some people just jokingly come in there and want to like, think about harming the plant. And yeah, the plant did respond and we noticed it. And the music just stops. And um, you know, sometimes you know, you'd be wondering 
um, you know, is it just a coincidence or not? But we we have noticed of working with it now for years that yeah, there is something to it. It's interesting because um, we we're working with an Adelaide professor, um, university professor at CSIRO at the moment. She's in viticulture and she studies how smoke affects grapevines. And she knows normally have to do analysis or the chemical analysis to see if with this bushfires come through, how much do can they keep of the grapes and take for wine or not? And basically they destroy everything. They don't know. But to be able to see data in real time, she thought this would be a great idea. Do plants know what happens when the smoke hits them? And do they send a response to the other plants, maybe chemically, maybe sonically, to tell the other ones to close their receptors so then mm. they don't get harmed by the smoke? And she thought it was a fascinating way we could see real-time data of plants getting affected by smoke, especially this one grapevine. This is the research she's doing at the moment. Mm. Fascinating. Mm. Fascinating. What's the lady's name? Uh, Renata. Um, I'll look her up yeah. here. Mm -hmm. Her name's Renata. And she's from the professor from Adelaide University at the CSIRO. She's given talks for us before. Um, oh, that's not about ETF. No, that's okay. We can... Uh, her name's <laughs> Renata from the CSIRO. And she's a professor in viticulture. And she travels around Australia looking at um, the effect of bushfires and smoke on grapevines. Fantastic. It's so interesting, isn't it? It's amazing. Mm. There's a whole world out there that we, that we need to explore and talk mm -hmm. about. That's why I wanted to talk to you both about this show. It's so fascinating. And pe people are interested in it. There's a yeah. huge interest in this sort of thing. I think we're all sort of changing the past decade or two. We're becoming, what are we becoming? More sort of in <laughs> touch with our feelings and we want nature more, more spiritual, more this, that. Yeah. yeah. But I think also too that... Um, Back in the 1970s, there were, these were big machines. They were hard to make. But now the advent of technology, like we, can, we now print, 3D print these ourselves, these boxes. We can solder oh, the circuits yes. together, you know, and, mm. and it's so much cheaper, so much easier. And now with the new ones we're presenting this year, the new ones are on a network. So we can broadcast across the internet and then we can pick up sounds in many locations so we can have a whole symphony of these plants yeah. playing in a garden. That we can all do it now through wirelessly. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, and I think this is another way to get people to appreciate nature, you know, this connection. Um, in this modern world, we've lost this mm -hmm. intimate connection with nature. Mm -hmm. And people don't tend to think about the trees or the plants. They just see them as something that's beautiful to have in the house or something just that looks sort of, you know, visually pleasing. But how they may be responding to us, and also in one way, there's some sort of exchange going on. And this is a way, using the music of the plants as a way to also get others to appreciate the incredible connection that the plant kingdom has for us. And maybe we will feel differently when we're in their presence. That's right. Mm. Absolutely. Absolutely. So have you got that um, plugged up yet? Yes, yeah, so at the moment we've got this, um, got in this little it? device here. And this little device, it's like a little light detector circuit. And it just measures the electrical resistance across the surface of the leaf, takes that data through a bit of code, and then puts it into the computer, into MIDI, and then we just attribute certain sounds mm. to it. Mm. So these are sort of like synthesizer sounds and that. But essentially, each plant has its own pattern, its own um, melody, you could say, to it.
interesting. Beautiful. Thank mm -hmm. you. Very nice. So if someone has just tuned in now, can you just go through, just very briefly, just the conversion process again? Because they'll be saying, okay, what was going on there? You were touching it, the sound was coming through. So just a little bit of a explanation again on how it co you're converting the energy of the plant to sound. So basically these are little medical electrodes. And in this case, we've got little clips on here. They're very gentle clips that are onto the, the leaf. So, so the, it takes the electrical data that's moving through the plant. So it's going through its processes like water transport, electron transport, and it's measuring the surface resistance across the surface of the leaf, the electrical resistance, taking that data into a little um, board called Adreno boards, and then that data is then converted, electronic data, into MIDI data, and then that MIDI data ascribes scales, musical resonance, and different sound patterns. Nice. Interesting. Mm -hmm. Fascinating. Love it. Mm -hmm. now, this, this one here is hardwired into a, a external 5 mm pin, but the new ones we've got for the show, which we're just, just finishing off at the moment, they're on a wireless system, so they can broadcast across the network and broadcast a, a, a big, bigger space, so we can have multiple of them coming into our laptops, and then we can since have a whole symphony of the plants playing. Mm. Very nice. Yeah. Now, does Jessica, did you want to come and say yeah. anything? Yeah. So we'll just do a yeah. swap, because we can only have yeah, two great. in the studio, yeah. so thank you. <laughs> That's right. And if I can just mention about the sound bath and what this makes unique is that um, instead of, I mean, the traditional sound baths a lot of people might have been to is like there's gongs and crystal bowls yeah, that's and, right. and so forth. But what's different and unique with this one is just the plants. And we're going to have lots of plants around who they're going to be playing the music. They are the ones conducting the sound bath, everyone's experience. And so, Really, it's a whole very different experience where we're just lying there listening to the sounds as the plants are playing them to us. Oh, so the people at the fringe show are lying down? Yeah, so you'll be lying oh, on your yoga mats and, and then you'll just let the plants do their um, communicating their singing. Yeah. And people can sit if need be as well. Mm. It depends on That's right. people's physical needs. Yep. <laughs> but when we did do that sound bath last time down at Black Diamond Gallery, mm -hmm. a couple of years ago, the energy was almost palatable in the in the air you can't quite describe it because even though not all the plants are connected up if they've all been in the exhibition together and listening to and you know feeling that music mm -hmm. and the environment together and also because they're so used to working with people the plants become quite responsive don't they mm. to the whole environment and to the crowd and it's different each time you do it it's never quite the same you know they pick up on it's the energy true, of the crowd people, yeah. and yeah. they respond to that as well like as much as we have a resonance with the plants because we're working with them we're building up to the show and you know I'm making art up with them and in that sense they then also then develop a bit of a social mm -hmm. plant attitude in a sense and mm -hmm. they've done it actually when you read the um secret life of plants there was actually a chapter in there talking about how plants in the shopping malls that were down the side where they didn't get seen by anybody were really quite sad and often quite sickly but the plants that were in the areas where they got admired all day in office buildings or in shopping malls actually tend to flourish because they get lots of positive feedback for even if they weren't necessarily cared for that much they were actually often blooming and much happier because they feed off the admiration and the love given to the, them by the public mm. so plants are very responsive to that mm. <laughs> wow so love our plants yes yes so, yeah. my mother-in-law's onto a good thing by singing <laughs> to them and, and talking they to love them. to be adored of course yeah. it's a living thing it's yeah. beautiful anything else you'd like to share jessica um, i think i'm here partly talk about the visual art component yeah. of the exhibition. Uh, we always, when we do our exhibitions with the plants, we always bring in a visual element, um, whether it be through sculpture or we've done film and lighting before at the Bicon in Botanic Gardens when they did this the first time. That was back in 2014. Yeah. Yeah, so this is our third time doing it as a major installation. And um, each time, as with the visual artists and the team, I tend to go into exploring how we have a symbiotic relationship with plants and what is that relationship one of the major relationships we do have with the plant kingdom is that we grow by the same ratios and geometry as plants do. You, everyone might know the Virtu Virtuvian Man and mm -hmm. Fibonacci, which you know, the, yeah. which is typically often um, symbolised or represented in art through the spiral of a fern leaf. Mm -hmm. But now you'll see pictures where there's spirals of um, galaxies and cyclones, and the same pattern is throughout nature and our whole body, our cell division and how our bodies grow and multiply from down to the point of inception all the way mm. through our lives is this um, same unfolding. And you can take these particular patterns and then represent them very beautifully in art. I mean, art's always inspired by sacred geometry. We know Leda and Da Vinci 
and Michelangelo are kind of our classic examples, but way back to the ancients they understood this too, that's mm. how they built their beautiful temples, which were modelled on the human body. All the temples have the same ratios of pi and phi in them, so that one, they resonate with the music, which has got these ratios in them, but then also that resonates with our bodies, so when we go into these larger temples that experience the art, the architecture, and then also the acoustics, we're also experiencing this amazing geometry, which is behind pretty much all of creation. So um, I'll be exploring in my work the sacred geometry of the plants, um, particularly inspired by um, this book. Is that a camera there? Yeah, yes, you can hold it By this up. book sure. here, which is The Hidden Geometry of Flowers, which is by um, a very famous geometrist called Keith Critchlow. He runs the School of Traditional Arts in London, which is actually also endorsed by the Prince of Wales, who's their patron. Uh, it's in a beautiful school that actually has resurrected all the sacred geometry arts from all the mm. world cultures that are being lost. Um, especially in Islamic and Middle Eastern and Asian and many other cultures. A lot of these traditional arts are slowly being lost as people are going into the automated yeah. building industry and automated pottery, etc. But he's actually very much been down at the school so people can recreate them and remember those crafts, which includes important. the study mm. of geometry, which is a big component of their study. Mm. Um, this beautiful book goes into all the different geometries we find in nature, but also specifically flowers, which is really... You, you, don't, you would never see a flower the same way after mm -hmm. you've read this book. Um, I'm also from The Secret Life of Plants as well. I'm inspired by the whole consciousness link. So the work will be exploring um, the Fibonacci and the geometry that we find in the trees and the flowers and the seeds, but also that of mm. ourselves as well. How do we relate to that? How does it relate to the cosmos, that greater language of vibration and patterns that we find everywhere? Interesting. Mm. Thank you. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> So it's, we've come to the end of the program, but Darren, did you want to say anything? Yeah, sure, yeah. So we'll, is it set? Perfect. Thank yeah, you, Jessica. Thank nice you. to meet you. <laughs> so we've got Bradley, Darren and Jessica yeah, joining us. So we just... Stop, uh, swapping out here, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah so we welcome everyone to come down opening night, March the 12th, um, 7.30 starts. March um, 12th. Probably best to probably book through the fringe sticks, even though it's free, so we can know the numbers for COVID and that we sort of stuff. We do have a capacity yeah. limit. Yeah. So. What is that? Um, so roughly, yeah, roughly. Yeah, roughly yeah. the capacity. Yeah, yeah, it's about yeah. 60, 70. Inside yeah. and another 50, 60 outside. So, we'll so go we do need to let it. you know. Yeah, yeah, so probably about 80 to 90 to 100 people will probably, hopefully, can go through there. And yeah. if it goes from 730 to 1030, so people can come in and bit later or in, in that and flow in and out with it and that sort of stuff and there's outdoor areas too so you can move people around a lot mm. which is really good and then the next night we're running sound baths the um saturday night and sunday night at 7 30 we get to lie down on the yoga mats and bathe in the plant sounds and explore the installation at night as well which is going to be great in wow. the city there and then we're opening during the day um and the cafe's there during the week you can go check out the art and we'll be there sometimes yeah. too so yeah that sounds <laughs> awesome we have to get down there we have to get down there. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Thanks, thanks for having us. us. Thanks for coming in. Well, thank now, you to the plant. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> now I don't know what music to put on. I can't remember that. Yeah. <laughs> I have to find some nice. Uh, let's go with something like a relaxing saxophone cafe music. Yes, yeah, that's That right, should yeah. be all right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Very nice. Yeah. Much. Yeah. So I was just checking the cameras because we've got someone else coming and I didn't want them yeah. to wait outside. Yeah. I can take a photo of your wall and then send yeah. you the photo if you want. Oh, yeah. Want me to do that? Do you want to do it? Yeah. Oh, is that going to be a thing? Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Probably not. No, no, no. Stand at the door there. Oh, I'll just stand. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's it. Yeah. It probably makes things strange, doesn't it? That's right. Well, we can get on the plan. Yeah, do one just with them with the plant first. I think that's. I got you in anyway. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Perfect. Now, yeah, if you're oh. ready, I've got you in it okay. too. Perfect. I took a few, so I'll send them to you. Thank you. Thanks for the great show. Thank Love you. it. Love looking at the Facebook Live things. It's great. Yeah, so Cheers. good. It's like, Cheers. Yeah, really good. You're welcome All to come musicians. on the show yeah. anytime. And you've got anything else creative you want to share? Mm. Yeah, we, so we do. Well, we do a lot of music. We've got a lot of music albums. We do a lot of live performances. Um, yeah. Yeah, oh, so yeah. Message me if you yeah, want. that'd I've got be the good. other station as well that I work at, Wow FM at 7.4. Yeah, that'd, that'd be nice. Yeah, we'll do yeah. that. Yeah. yeah. After the fringe, sometime we'll contact you. Yeah. Oh, you've definitely got a couple more projects of Sala coming up. Yeah, yeah. There's usually yeah, Sala fringe at least every year. Mm -hmm. All right. So, any shout outs here? 
Hello to anyone before I turn it on. Um, the one thing, one thing that they forgot to mention um, was the cafe is actually called the Food Print Experience. Yeah. We're going to be doing all the catering. And it's all going to be um, low impact foods, um, biodynamic and organic, yeah. ethical yeah. brandings for both the wine, the alcohol and the food. <laughs> And shout out to Electricity for Progress, Sam in USA for the plant devices working with him. Great work. Um, and the joinery in general, just yeah. for, um, they've just been great in helping us with COVID and getting all this up and running. Because yeah. we changed our venue from the Academy of Light Centre um, in the original print guide to the um, city at the joinery. So um, please be aware that our venue has changed. But you can probably see that on the digital version online. Thank you. Cheers, cheers. <laughs> 